Hello, everyone. This is section two of lesson three of Pre-Socratics to Augustine, also called History of Philosophy One. We are still talking about Parmenides. We have so far talked about two sets of ideas. One, just fundamentally, Parmenides' proposal that there is an exhaustive and exclusive disjunction between what is being intelligible always the same on the one hand, and what is not the perceptible always changing on the other hand. And we have talked a little bit last time about what is not, about the perceptible, the domain of which we have mere opinions, about which we have these opinions, mortal opinions, as he puts it, that do not gain any kind of truth such that ultimately whatever we say about the perceptible world just is a kind of ignorance. And now we'll talk a little more about being. Because, you know, after all, what is that? So far, you might think that is a little bit mysterious. It's just like a lot of complicated terminology. So what is it that Parmenides says being is? And we have sort of worked our way towards that intuition by saying that intelligible things are or have being and that we can imagine what that means by thinking that a theorem or an axiom or a theory just isn't the kind of thing that dies or is born or changes in any kind of way. So now we look at fragment B8. You have probably already seen on the study questions on the handout that there is a kind of standard way of numbering these fragments and B8 is the fragment that we now need. That gives you a fairly long list of characteristics of being. And for today, we want to just look at that list and think a little bit through it. The first two items on the list are that being is ungenerated and indestructible. So that's kind of the intuition that I mentioned already a moment ago. If you think about, say, a theory or an axiom, it's not the kind of thing that is born or is generated in any kind of way and then would be destructed or would die in any kind of way. That's just not the sort of thing that the theoretical item does. So those are the first two characteristics of being ungenerated, indestructible. And then there is a kind of tricky question about the nature of the list of characteristics that follows. The next couple of characteristics are that being is whole, that it is of one kind, that it is unwavering, and that it is complete. Now, what does that mean? Roughly the intuition behind being whole and of one kind, you could think of something that is as it were cohesive and continuous in and of itself so that it doesn't you know, divide up into parts so that it's not like, you know, some amount of stuff where you can say, well, that's like the thicker part or that is the, the green part or that is whatever, but rather it's just sort of all of it, like whatever it is, all of it is being. And that just means that all of it is of one kind and whole. Now, what does unwavering mean? Unwavering means it doesn't as a verb wander around. It doesn't move. So the way in which unwavering is being explained then is that it does not move in the sense of locomotion, where that is movement from place to place. And then there is the idea that it is complete. Now, what does that mean? It's, it's not as if any of these concepts were kind of fully explained in the text, but again, the intuition is kind of similar to the idea that I mentioned already with like continuity and wholeness, that it's not as if whatever being is, there's like a chunk of it here and then there's a chunk of it that is still missing or something like that. Like for something to be a theorem, let's say, or for something to be a theory, it needs a kind of completeness. Otherwise, it simply isn't a theory or a theorem or an axiom, you know, whatever we stipulate might have the features of being. So it's a difficult interpretive question whether we think, and that is now the question for you today, whether you think 
that the list of characteristics of being ends with complete. Why could that be? Because the sorts of reasoning that I have mentioned now for, you know, how can we think of ungenerated, how can we think of unwavering, and so on and so forth, it might seem that right after complete, these in the text in B8, these kinds of reasoning, these kinds of arguments are being mentioned. So that you could think, okay, so the structure of the text is that we get a list of characteristics. And once we're done with the list, then we get the reason why. Then we get an explanation of how it works. And right after complete, the way it continues is that Parmenides says, well, and it would be kind of incorrect to talk about it either in the past tense or in the future tense or in the present tense. So, so nor was it ever, nor will it ever be, and so on and so forth. So what does that mean? The thought is that if something is atemporal, if something just isn't the kind of thing that changes over time, then it is not applicable that we talk about it as what it was or what it currently is or what it will be. Because those are the kinds of locutions and ways of ascribing properties which only work with changing kinds of things. But if something is always the same, then then it's just not making sense that it used to be such and such, or now it is becoming such and such. So, so that's the next bit in the text. And that could seem to be part of the rationale for how should we understand the earlier features and characteristics of being. You know, why is it? Or what, what are we saying when we say that being is ungenerated or indestructible? Well, it is not the kind of thing that has a past has a present and a future, is an atemporal thing. That could be a way of explicating these earlier characteristics of being. However, right after this bit in the text about the non-temporal nature of being comes another feature or characteristic, and that is one. And in the tradition, which engages with Parmenides and which engages also with kind of the school of philosophers who are followers of Parmenides. They, Parmenides comes from Ilia, and so other philosophers who come from Ilia, we call them Iliadics, and those who follow Parmenides in one way or another, the Iliadics ascribe to Parmenides as pretty much maybe even his most famous idea that being is one. So that would be odd if the list of characteristics ended with complete, as we're prior to the claim that being is one. But then it turns out that the big claim that Parmenides makes, according to his successors, is that being is one. So the second option is that we say, no, 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 all of this is just the long list. There is not a kind of neat distinction between list of characteristics first and then like explanation of and reasoning for which, which tells why we should ascribe these characteristics to being rather the list just goes on. And, and we need to say that because otherwise we are not able to say that being is one. And that really is something we want to say. Now, why would that be an important idea? The thought would be that if being were, you know, a plurality, if there were several beings, beings in the plural, then it wouldn't be true that being is whole and complete and all these other characteristics that we already looked at. And then it wouldn't be true, for example, that if being is, let's say, let's say if a theory is something that has the status of being, and if we think that there is some plausibility to the idea that a theory needs to be complete for otherwise it just isn't a theory, then, then this feature that for anything to have the status of being, it needs to be one. That seems pretty compelling and it seems important. So the task that you have is to form an opinion based on, you know, a mortal opinion. It's not, you're not going to solve the question. It is going to be a mere opinion of a mortal, but that's just fine. The interpretation of humanities is very, very tricky. And the point is that you just like think carefully through the text. So the task is that you form an opinion on whether you think the list of characteristics ends with complete and the rest is rationale for it, or whether you think it continues 
such that the characteristic one is included.